Okay, micro jig fishing. A lot of people don't know what a micro jig is. Look how it's tiny, it's a little micro jig. Now with all the Ned Rig stuff and the Ned Rig phenomenon that's been happening the past number of years, there are people are selling and buying tons of Ned Rigs and throwing them and obviously catching a lot of fish on them. The next phase is gonna be micro jigs uh, with, with missile jigs. Uh, we've got a couple of these products already ready for you. There's Ike's micro jig. We even got the Ike's micro football, uh, but whatever. There are a few other ones out there on the market, but there's really not that many, really not that many for what the potential on this technique is. So I'm gonna give you the basics today it, the micro jig fishing is a spinning rod technique. That's one thing I want to emphasize. It is a spinning rod technique. We're talking about jigs, 16th, 8th ounce, and then you know some of the other techniques you can you can uh, with the bigger football jigs you can go up to a 3 8 uh, is what we offer. I've seen half ounce micro jigs. Uh, that that's a very specialized uh, product and, and situation. But for most micro jig fishing. Uh, you can you can catch fish in little small rivers. You can catch them in bigger reservoirs. You can catch uh, use micro jigs in the Great Lakes and catch the fire out of some smallmouth, which I have done, and they are very unique in the way that they they uh, come through the water. Now, just concept wise, how it's different than a Ned rig. A Ned rig small, uh, slender but it doesn't have any appendages, so it, it glides. When you lift that bait up off the bottom and drift it back, it's gonna glide left and right. That is the big deal and the big key with the Ned Rig. Now, the micro jig is different because that little skirt, that little tiny micro jig skirt, it, it has so much resistance, it's not gonna allow the bait to drift. It's gonna come back in a single direction like a bigger jig, but it is so much smaller that smaller, shorter, compact jig, man, it gets bites when nothing else will at certain times. Now, the, the micro jig, when you're gonna fish it, you wanna remember that skirt pulsing. You wanna remember that skirt being able to pop out. That is a big aspect of a micro jig. And uh, again, it's a spinning rod technique. I even designed for cash and rods. This is the new uh, Icon John Cruise micro jig rod. It's a seven foot one. So that's what you want. You want about a seven foot medium heavy. You want something with a little bit of, of backbone to it, but not too stiff. A little bit of backbone so you can kind of lean back into those fish. And uh, I use 12 pound Sunline X-Plasma braid to a eight or even 10 pound uh, Sunline sniper leader. I like to have about a 20 foot leader. That's my setup there. 3000 size uh, Daiwa spinning reel. And, uh, and that's kind of the, the setup on the rod and reel. And then this is a, an eighth ounce micro jig. I've probably caught more fish on the eighth ounce micro jig than any other size. So in the micro jig, so that's what, uh, that's what I'm gonna be throwing around today. And when you wanna, when you're looking to, to fish it, uh, this is more in line with the way you would fish, let's say a shaky head. You're gonna throw it out, let it sink to the bottom, and then you're gonna, you're gonna just kind of slowly drag it and, and give it little short shakes so that that skirt can pulse and get in the, uh, get, get at those fish, go make them go crazy when they see that thing kind of going along the bottom. And you can, you can fish it kind of anywhere. There's no wrong place to fish a micro jig. I'll just tell you that. Uh, like right here, you can see that th there's rock under the water. You can see where it's, it's coming out on the bank. Uh, we're we're going to fish this little this little secondary point. That's a that's a typical place where you you're going to fish it a micro jig. I'm throwing that throwing that little jig out there, and just going to be just going to be crawling it back, pulling it over all those little rocks, and then just waiting waiting for that fish to bite it. When I get a bite on that micro jig. I'm gonna reel up, it's very, very important on a micro jig, very important. When you get a bite, you're gonna, you're gonna reel up all of your slack and then, and then just lean back into them and, and want, you want that rod to load up as much as possible because when that fish first shakes its head, that's when that little small gamagatsu hook is gonna, is gonna get pierced right into the side of their face. And uh, once you do that, they're, they're not coming off. 
they're not coming off. So that's uh, that's kind of how you you fish it. That's just the very the very basics. Uh, this the micro jig is really really good on smallmouth rivers. Uh, now I'm talking the Susquehanna up in Pennsylvania. Very very good there. Uh, it is very good on the James River, the New River, uh, even the Roanoke River. You know, right even right in Salem, I've caught a number of fish on the uh, the little micro jig. And when I'm fishing in in current like that, I really really like the eighth ounce. I've caught some on the 16th uh, when I'm fishing real shallow, especially in the summertime when the lake, uh, the rivers get down a little bit lower and they're a little shallower. That 16th ounce can be, can be real good. And you know, this is a is obviously it's a big crawfish imitator. So you're gonna and these things are you're imitating the crawfish, but in the winter time, micro jigs can be very good as well. In the winter time, bait fish colors for me have outproduced any other color i don't care what it is black and brew bruiser um you know green pumpkin pb and j it, it, it for some reason the bait fish color like the soft shell right here out produces in the winter time in the springtime it's hard to beat something uh that's got that natural color like a um green pumpkin or PBJ or even the um, Sunfish IPA those are my three springtime colors and they work all the way through the sum through the summertime as well into into the fall uh, my favorite uh, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna break it down I'm gonna I'm gonna get you to come down here to my level we're gonna we're gonna go down here on the deck and then we're gonna I'm gonna show you individually uh, some colors and and kind of how those those shapes and sizes look all right, I had to break it down here. I had to sunglasses off and everything. Uh, this is the little micro jig that we've we've been uh, just tossing around here to show you how to how to throw it. Uh, again, eighth ounce. It's got the weed guard in there. Uh, when they come in the package, they don't have the weed guard inserted. This is a, a three sixteenths PB and J, uh, but this is a uh, here's a sixteenth ounce without the weed guard. If I'm fishing the sixteenth ounce. That fall rate is so slow. I rarely put the weed guard in there, uh, but if I'm an eight with the eighth ounce, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. It kind of depends on if if I think there's going to be stick ups, then I'll I'll put the weed guard in because that, the wood is the only thing that's really going to hang the the uh, micro jig. If I'm going to go to the three sixteenths, that jig is going to be having a lot of contact with the bottom. That's when I'm going to go to the, uh, the weed guard in. 100% of the time and if I'm throwing the quarter ounce or the three-eighths this is the quarter ounce uh, I'm gonna stick that weed guard in there as well and then here's the the three-eighths you know you can see it's a, you know quite a bit bigger this is what I'm gonna be uh, fishing in current heavy current like up there in the St. Lawrence River or if I'm gonna be fishing really deep on Great Lakes or Lake Champlain somewhere like that that uh, that three-eighths will get down and uh, and and do the job uh, my probably my favorite trailer is the missile baits drop crawl and you can see it's just a real thin and skinny crawfish looking bait and and then you can you can put it on there full or you can put it you know knock off you know the tip of it a little bit if you want to make it even stubbier uh, you can do that as well but then also uh, there are times when I like to put a uh, baby D bomb on the back I'll just trim off the body and you can use you, you can take used ones you know you can go fish with a baby D bomb catch fish on them keep them in the bottom of the boat and then uh, and then trim them down like this and use them on uh, micro jig trailers that that looks really good on that micro football I like that little bit wider presentation it gives it a little flapping action when you pull it quickly uh, that's kind of the the setup there uh, but this is a dill pickle, another one of my, my favorite uh, colors in that, especially in the fall. I don't know why it's early fall. Sometimes they really like that uh, summertime as well. They like that dill pickle. Um, but that's the, uh, the nuts and bolts of the, the micro jig and how I like to rig it. It is a very simple looking creature, but I can tell you, man, it really catches a ton of fish. I've caught some big largemouth. Um, I know of some fives and sixes caught on the, uh, I've caught fours on the micro jig. Definitely a big smallmouth uh, deal. 
catching a lot of big smallmouth on that bait. You know how smallmouth love those little crawfish. That is a perfect imitator for those uh, little crawfish running around the rivers or the lakes. So if you have any other questions on micro jig fishing, drop them down there in the comments. I appreciate you guys watching as always. And if you have any experience with micro jigs, I want to I hear about that as well. So thanks for watching.